Hello and welcome back YouTube friends. My name is Lou. I am a yoga teacher and a strength and conditioning coach. And today I have for you a 30 minute energizing vinyasa practice. So we've just moved into the season of Aries, which means that we're actually in a new year astrologically. And this time really symbolizes new beginnings, new chapters. So it's a period of initiation and stepping forwards into new things and new energy that you would like to adopt. So we're going to get straight into it today. We're going to start at the back of the mat, feet at hips width apart. And if it feels better to have the feet slightly wider or narrower, please do. And then we're going to drop it all the way down into a forward fold. I'm just going to pop my hair back into a bun. Just give it a little twist. All right, let's get straight into it. Coming all the way down, soft bend in the knees. Let the head, the shoulders, everything completely go. Maybe you even give the head a little shake here, a little shimmy through the shoulders. And you can either let the arms hang heavy or you can interlace hands and elbows finding ragdoll. But either way, just taking a gentle sway from side to side. And as we spend these first few moments just really settling into the practice, saying hello to the hamstrings, to the glutes, we'll set an intention for the practice today. So your sankalpa. And if you can, thinking about your intention in the sort of vast scope that yoga is, so not just thinking about something that you'd like to embody on the mat, but also something that you can embody in the yoga that is your daily life. And once you've thought of the intention, we're going to release the hands down onto the shins. Lift your head halfway, coming into Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, empty the breath, Uttanasana. Let's do that two more times. Lifting in as you pull the tailbone back. Exhale, we fold. One more time, lifting on the breath in. Exhale and fold. Good. And then from here, just pressing into the feet, rolling the spine all the way up to standing. Stacking the spine vertebrae by vertebrae. Shoulders, neck and head comes last. When you reach the top, we're going to use the hands just to rub down the legs. Waking up the sensory body, but also getting that lymphatic fluid moving through the body. So paying particular attention to the backs of the knees, around the ankles, working around the hip space, the groin, and then working across the lower back, the sacrum area. And you can either continue rubbing here or you can pound with fists lightly across the body. Activating through the kidneys and then working your way along the torso. And there doesn't need to be any sort of specific pace or rhythm. And then working up across the lung meridian line. So you can either continue with that sort of fist or you can just use the ends of your knuckles to tap along the clavicle there, the bony part of the collarbone. And then rubbing your arms all the way down, starting from the wrists, and you might even like to bring your arms up overhead, and then rubbing in a downwards motion all the way down to the armpits. And the main lymph nodes of the body are situated in the neck, in the armpits, in the gut, and also in the groin. So getting movement and heat to those areas is really good for boosting lymphatic flow. Not only does it move with gravity, but it moves with muscular contraction. 
And then we're just gonna open and close the hands into a fist and your arms are likely already feeling quite warm. Option to bring the arms up overhead if you're feeling for it, otherwise just keeping them out in front. And we'll go for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, good. And then clasp the hands together, circle out through the wrists. Beautiful. Alrighty, let's make our way all the way down into a fold once again, starting with chin to chest, rounding through the shoulders, big C curve through the spine, soft bend in the knees. And then when you reach the bottom, we're gonna very slowly, almost like this animalistic crawl, we're gonna crawl all the way out into a downward facing dog. And this is the first down dog of the practice. So we'll spend a little bit of time just waking up through ankles, knees, hips. Finding a little bit of a rotation through the spine if that feels good. But staying connected as always to the strength of your hands. So pressing down into the index finger and the thumb, strongest part of the hand. And then allowing that upward force of energy to travel all the way up to the shoulders, bringing the shoulders a little bit closer to the ears. So contrary to sort of older yoga anatomy teachings that tell you to draw your shoulders down, it's actually counterproductive for what we're doing. The arms, the sternum, the ribs, everything should be rising up towards the ears. Not squeezing, but allowing the arms to press away so that the shoulders are engaged. Alrighty, let's take a cleansing breath here, breathing in through the nose. And then let it go through the mouth. Beautiful. Alrighty, let's roll the body forwards to a high plank. Big breath in and then exhale as you soften the knees towards the ground and shift it all the way back, downward facing dog. And we'll do that a few times, rolling forwards, high plank. Exhale, we shift it back. One more time, coming forwards. And this time holding in your plank, adjusting your hands and your feet as you need to. We're going to rock forwards and backwards over the wrists, getting everything fired up. We're going to go for six, five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. Lower your knees to the ground. We're going to come all the way down onto the belly. Inhale as you lift the chest for cobra or baby cobra. Exhale, tuck under the toes, downward facing dog. Let's ground into the left foot, send the right leg to the sky. And then we'll bend this top knee, stack the hip. So taking that right knee as high as you can. And then we'll circle in both directions through this right side ankle. Beautiful. And then press all the way back to three leg dog, breath in. Exhale, roll forwards, tap your right elbow. Beautiful, from your right elbow, you're gonna bring it across to your left elbow. And then place your right knee down behind your left wrist. From here, anchor into the right hand and then reach the left arm up to the sky. Holding here for one more breath. And stay for the out breath. Beautiful. Right hand, place, sorry, left hand places down just behind your right knee and then step it all the way back to downward facing dog. Let's send the left leg up to the sky, big breath in. And once again, bending the top knee, stacking the hip and then we'll circle both directions through this left side. Keeping that left knee nice and high as you circle the ankle just getting that lymph fluid moving through the feet. Maybe even wiggle the toes a little bit here as well. And then we'll press all the way back to three leg dog breath in, exhale, tap your left elbow. 
come all the way across to your right elbow and then place your left knee down behind your right wrist left hand stays where it is right arm reaches up towards the sky let's hold here for a breath in and a breath out beautiful right hand plants down tuck under the back toes downward facing dog let's bend the knees look forward step hop or float the feet to the hands lift the chest halfway exhale and fold ground into the feet sweep the arms up Urd for hastasana exhale we fold heart space to the thighs uttanasana inhale is your halfway lift exhale plant the hands step or jump back through chaturanga option to lower to the knees inhale for upward facing dog or cobra exhale downward facing dog good arriving with a breath in and a breath out we bend the knees look forward step hop or float the feet to the hands lift the chest halfway exhale we fold ground into the feet sweep the arms all the way up to the sky exhale we fold uttanasana inhale is your halfway lift exhale plant the hands step or jump back chaturanga dandasana option to lower to the knees inhale for upward facing dog or cobra exhale downward facing dog arriving with a breath in and a breath out Good, bend the knees, look forward. Step, hop or float the feet to the hands. Lift the chest halfway, exhale and fold. Press into the feet, sweep the arms to the sky. Exhale, we fold one last time, Uttanasana. Inhale is your halfway lift. Exhale, plug the hands, step or jump back. Chaturanga Dandasana, option to lower to the knees. Inhale for the back bend of your choice. Exhale, downward facing dog. So good, breathing in and breathing out. Alrighty, we're gonna lower down to the forearms. Now, if this is a little bit too strong, option to stay in your down dog, or you can drop it down to child's pose for a couple of breaths. Otherwise, meeting me in Ardha Pincha Mayarasana. Now from your dolphin, anchor into your left foot, send your right leg to the sky. We're gonna pulse here, lifting all the way up onto the ball of that left foot for five, four, three, two, one. Good, right foot comes to the ground. Send your left leg to the sky. Once again, we pulse for five, four, three, two, one beautiful left foot meets the ground can you press up with both arms at the same time good job let's take a breath breathing in and breathing out Alrighty, grounding into the left foot let's send the right leg to the sky exhale roll forwards tap your right elbow Sweep it all the way back, big breath in. Big step forwards to the outside of your right hand. Drop it all the way down to lizard, Uttan Prashtasana. Left hand stays where it is, sorry. Right hand stays where it is. Left hand comes behind the head. Now from here, can you press the inside of your right thigh, inside of your right knee, to the back of your right arm, creating a little bit of more stability through that right side. We take a big breath in as we unravel the left side elbow towards the ceiling. Good, on the out breath, can you draw that left elbow all the way down towards your right foot? Let's do that a few more times, breathing in as we lift. Exhale, we twist. One more time, inhale to lift. Exhale, we twist. Beautiful. 
Alrighty, left hand meets the ground. Let's pick up that back knee, tuck under the back toes, coming into a high Skandasana fold, reaching your hands towards the front left corner of the mat. Good, sending your hips all the way back, heart space reaches forwards. We're gonna hold for one more steady breath. Stay for the out breath. Beautiful, Skandasana at the back of the mat. We rise all the way up, bending into your left knee as you sink it across into your Skandasana. Pressing forwards into warrior two. So grounding into the left foot, we press all the way up, reaching the arms forwards. Big bend in that front knee. So from here, we're going to do two rounds of Kapalabhati breath, also known as the breath of fire. And we're going to take a mudra when we do this practice. So in Kundalini yoga, this is known as the ego eradicator. <laughs> so to do this, you're going to reach your arms out wide, roll your forefingers in, but keep your palms stretched out and then thumbs facing up. Now this pranayam is a forceful exhale followed by a passive or a soft inhale. And the inhale is just a response to the exhale. And as you exhale, you're gonna create this pumping action through your abdomen. So it's gonna look a little bit like this. And you can move as fast or as slow as you like. The speed in which you do this pranayam does not determine how effective it is. So please just listen to your body. I'm going to count for 40 pumps. If you only do 20 pumps, that is completely fine. At the end of the first round, we'll release the breath fully. And then I'll give you the option to either just breathe into the belly and the pelvic floor and soften or you can retain the breath. Now this is known as Antara Kumbhaka and this breath retention creates an energetic lock for the prana and the heat that you're creating within the body. And we'll hold only for about 20 seconds. Of course, you can release sooner if you need to and know that the breath retention is optional. So thank you for coming to my TED talk. I just think it's really important that we explain these things fully, especially if it's your first time doing this practice. If you are pregnant, I do recommend not doing this practice um, and just coming back to a soft diathematic breath instead. Okay. Let's reach the arms out. <laughs> Let's have a little bit of fun. Roll the fingers in. Keep your palms stretched out, thumbs facing up. Let's take a little half breath in for 40 pumps of Kapalabhati. Take a full breath in. Option to hold the breath. If you're holding the breath, tuck the chin, interlace the hands behind your back. Five. Ten. Fifteen. Twenty. And release. And let's take a couple of bends through that front knee. I know this leg is working hard. Maybe you even bring your hands onto your belly, expanding your belly with your breath. And so if that was your first time doing this pranayam, now you have a feel for what it looks and feels like in the body. And you can choose if you'd like to join in for a second round. For those of you that would like to join in, let's reach the arms out, come back into your warrior two. We roll the fingers in, but keep the palms stretched, thumbs facing up. We take a half breath in for 40 pumps. Four. 
full breath in. Option to hold if you are, tuck the chin, interlace the hands behind the back. Five. Ten. Fifteen. Twenty. And release. Once again, finding a bit of movement through that front leg, soft belly, soft pelvic floor. Awesome. All right, from here, hands through heart center. We're gonna pivot on this back leg, coming into a crescent lunge, a little bit of a wobbly crescent lunge. Now this front leg's been working and we're gonna power forwards into a warrior three. Option to flex or point the foot, whatever feels best. Let's hold here for one more breath. Stay for the out breath. Beautiful, big step back with your left leg as we sweep the arms around, pivot your back foot in, frame your left foot at the back of the mat. Step it back to high plank. Option here to flow through a vinyasa. And I'll meet you in downward facing dog. Coming back to the breath, breathing in and breathing out. Alrighty, let's send the left leg to the sky. Exhale, roll forward, step your left foot to the outside of your left hand, drop it all the way down into your lizard Uttan Prashtasana. Left hand anchors down. Once again, option to press the back of your left arm into the inside of your left leg. Right hand comes behind the head. See if you can elongate through the front of the chest. Big breath in as we lift that right elbow up towards the sky. Exhale, right elbow down towards your front left foot. Two more times with the breath, breathing in as you lift. Exhale, we twist. One more time, big breath in. And a breath out. Beautiful. Coming all the way back up through center. Plant your hands, tuck under your back toes. We're gonna come all the way up into a high skandhasana, reaching towards the front right corner of the mat. Sending your hips back and your heart forwards. We'll hold for one more breath. Stay for the out breath. Beautiful. Anchor into that front foot as you rise up. Skandasana, right side. Big bend into your right knee. Warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. We rise up. Left knee presses forwards in space. Two rounds of Kapalabhati, option to join along. Thumbs up, we take a breath in. Release the breath, full breath in. Option to interlace, tuck the chin and hold. Five. Ten. Fifteen. Twenty and release. Hands onto the belly. Oh yes, that front leg is firing. Alrighty, let's do our fourth and final round. We reach the arms out, thumbs facing up. We take a half breath in.
release the breath. Full breath in. Option to interlace and hold. Five. Ten. Fifteen. Twenty. And release. Soft belly, soft pelvic floor. Whew. We be generating some heat in the body today. <laughs> Alrighty, let's bring the hands to the heart, pivot onto that back foot, coming up into a wobbly crescent lunge. We're going to press off into a warrior three, right leg kicks back, flex or point the foot. We're going to hold for one more breath. Stay for the out breath. Beautiful, big step back with your right leg. Pivot your back leg in as your arms cartwheel up and over to frame your right foot. Step it back to high plank pose, Kumbhakasana. Option to flow through a vinyasa and I'll meet you in downward facing dog. And coming back to the breath. Okay. From here, we're going to walk the feet into the center of the mat and then walk the hands back towards the feet. Now, option here to interlace the hands or peace fingers around the big toes, or you can step your hands underneath your feet, coming into a fold here with a little bit of leverage as you pull down through the upper body. So this is your first option. Second option, if you'd like to have a little bit of playtime, you can come into Bakasana Crow Pose, spreading the hands at shoulders width, nice wide fingers, bringing the knees up as high as you can into the armpits. And then we gaze forwards, not down. Maybe you take one leg off, maybe you take both legs off. Just a little bit of fun, holding for a breath. And then we'll drop it all the way down, everyone together, meeting in a Malasana a yogi squat in the center of the mat. And from here, let's interlace the fingers, push the palms all the way up towards the sky. And then we're gonna come all the way up to standing for eight, seven, six, five, four. I went up too fast, three, two, one. Good, heel toe, the feet in, roll the shoulders back and down the spine. And bring your hands onto your body, just making that visceral connection. And we'll be finishing today's energizing practice in a standing shape in Tadasana. But of course, if you would like to come into a seat or if you'd like to lay on your back, you're more than welcome to make your way down. Otherwise, rooting into your feet, spreading through the toes. And finding this sense of lift through the body, but not contraction. We have a tendency to contract and be told to tuck everything in, suck it all in. Just let everything sit where it naturally sits. Let your pelvis sit where it sits. Let your belly expand with the breath. And as though somebody has a piece of string that they're pulling at the crown of your head, just finding this ever so slight lift through the head and the front of the chest. Maybe you keep your hands on your body. Maybe you bring your palms out in front of you. Receptivity pose. And perhaps you can even subtly notice that prana, that life force that you've been cultivating in your practice that heat. And coming back to the intention that you set at the start of today's practice. And breathing it in all the way from the crown of the head, all the way down to the soles of your feet and beyond.
And thank you so much, everybody, for practicing with me. I hope that you enjoyed today's fiery, energizing flow. As always, I'd like to acknowledge yoga's roots, this beautiful practice that's been passed down for many, many generations, and also acknowledge the sacred land that I am teaching from, the land of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nations. I'll see you again soon. Have a beautiful day wherever you are in the world. Bye-bye.